Mike Bond here with the champ, Sergio Pettis, who is set to make his first Bellator bantamweight title defense in the Bellator 272 main event against Kyoji Horiguchi, December 3rd, man. Uh, how are we feeling? First camp as champ, almost coming to an end. Oh, man, honestly, nothing feels uh, any different. It's just, uh, you know, another five-round fight I get prepped for. Uh, a tough opponent is always, always, you know, I keep on climbing up the ranks the, the tougher the opponents get, so... I feel good, man. My my body's doing well, my weight's well, and uh, yeah, every, everything's lined up for a, a good next Friday. Yeah, so how do you kind of do that separation? I mean, I'm sure putting that title around your waist when you won it was such a great feeling. It was, you know, a high of the career to a certain degree, but I'm sure you want to separate it and you don't want to let maybe the confidence or the ego take over. So at what point after winning the belt were you able to kind of put that behind me and say, you know, I'm going into this camp or this fight looking at it like I'm the challenger all over again or kind of separating those two things? Yeah, man, honestly, I, I like I've, I've had, this is going to be my 27th fight. So I understand, you know, that the, the ego um there's times where i felt like i was really good and really big and got destroyed so you know i know i know i know that game side now the mental side and um you know i, I feel like nothing's really changed you know um i i have more money in my bank account which i can invest into my training and this is you know this is all i want to do full time around i'm in the gym all year round only time i leave is uh when i'm on vacations but uh, other than that man this is all i do so I just feel, um, you know, I'm starting to get more more confident, but I'm still humbled, man. I've been humbled five times already, you know. So I know, I know, at any point, this could be taken away from me. Yeah, definitely. So when this came together, uh, obviously a great performance to win the belt. Seemed like there was a few options on the table. I know Juan was wanting a rematch, and you know, there was some talk about fighting Rofion, who I know is your teammate, uh, a Grand Prix, and then you know, Kyoji, of course, who uh, I don't think was signed back with the organization at the time. They got a deal done. So, like, was this a surprise to you a little bit? Was this what you expected, what you wanted out of kind of all the options that were being floated out there? Yeah, man, I feel like this was uh, the better option for me uh, in my career, honestly. Uh, Juan, I don't know why he wanted that rematch, man. I feel like, you know, I, I, I kind of dominated him and I wasn't even at my best me. You know, I still fought a little, a little hesitant. I still didn't truly believe in myself. And, um, you know, after that fight, I really started seeing my potential. You know, I started to see like the, the, the stuff that I've been working on all year round and throughout my whole career is coming together. And I'm at an age of my life now where everything's just coming together really well. I just got engaged. Um, got my own house and, you know, a lot of stuff to focus on. But right now, the, the main focus is still becoming the best Sergio Pettis. And whatever that turns out to be, that turns out to be, you know. So I'm just in this for the long run, man. This is uh, this is literally all I want to do. Yeah. And uh, what about, you know, obviously, Kyoji has done a lot of great things, you know, was the champ there before, done his stuff in Japan and all that. Um, you guys were in the UFC, I believe, some years together, never crossed past there. Is this a fight that you've wanted to a degree, even, you know, dating back to the earlier days and, you know, the pre previous organization? Yeah. yeah. So in the, when, when he was in the UFC, I was actually fighting at 135 at the time. So, you know, he wasn't even on my radar. Um, it was someone I actually, you know, looked. I, I looked at his style and thought it was an interesting style. He fought my teammate Chico Camus. Uh, he beat him and did a really good job. And Chico, I know how how much of a grinder he is at the gym and how how good he is. So, um, you know, just to see that level and to fight Demetrius Johnson too, man. You know, that's a that's a a, a big big thing to do, especially you know he's one of the goats. So. Um, yeah, man, I know, you know, I never really thought this fight would happen and never like visualized this fight happening. But now that it's happening, I'm like, yeah, I'm ready for it, man. Yeah, of course. And actually, uh, one of our other reporters did an interview with Duke Rufus this week, and he said that, you know, the challenge of, you know, the Taekwondo background, and obviously you've been training and that kind of stuff for, for a very long time. He said you have some tricks up your sleeve for it. Of course, you're not going to give away the game plan or anything like that. But um, do you feel like you kind of have some good counters to the awkward style that he presents? Yeah, man, I'm excited to uh, just test my style against all styles, you know, and this is a, a new style to the table. He's got a karate style, um, but he's also good at MMA. You know, it's like he, he's not just a stand up fighter. He can submit you. He can take you down. He knows how to play the game really well. I mean, 29 and three, you know, it's like hard to deny that. But um, yeah, man, I, I, I'm excited to test my skills, test my style. I'm at a good point in my life where I feel like, uh, you know, this is going to be my breakout fight, honestly, like this is going to be where I could show who I am and not not in a sense of you know media or whatever but uh, as a sense of in fighting like to show what i'm capable of doing i still haven't had that performance yet where i'm like yo this is it you know like this is this is who i am this is what i'm gonna be so yeah i'm, I'm taking it fight by fight man and um i feel i feel like this fight is gonna be the one man where I, i'm gonna really showcase what sergio pettis is about 
That's really interesting because I thought you showed a lot of great stuff in the wand fight and you're kind of sitting up here being like, ah, like I didn't even think that was my best. But I think from an outsider's perspective, maybe some people would say it was one of your best that got you the freaking title. So obviously pretty good. But what are you kind of looking for that has been missing that we're not seeing that maybe, you know, you're internally wanting to show? I'm just, you know, showing what I'm capable of doing. Like, uh, uh, I mean, I did do well in that fight. You know, I did some good things. But at, at the same time, I still felt hesitant in certain situations where I know I could uh, really put things together and, uh, you know, just really be a full mixed martial artist. And that, that, that fight, I just kind of got to be a striker, good takedown defense. And, you know, they haven't really seen my ground game. They haven't seen my, my throws, my, my overall MMA game. So, you know, being at 28 and having 10 years of pro fighting, I still, you know, I still feel I didn't have that, that performance ever where, where I'm, like I said, I'm satisfied. Yeah, as you just mentioned, it was just the 10 year anniversary, uh, I believe two months ago in September of your MMA debut. Do you feel like okay. you've been in the game for this long? Like, does it feel like it's been a 10 year journey or not quite? You, you know what? It doesn't feel like that. I feel uh, my, as my 10 year, my 10 year in the sport now, I feel like the, the love I have for the sport is so much different than when I first started, you know, being young and just being unconfident and insecure as an individual. And it really showed in my career, you know, like I didn't get to do what I, what I felt like I was capable of doing, which, which is awesome now. Cause you know, I'm a late bloomer. I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm really at a point in my life where I'm able to, I think, put it all together and just um, go out there and be aligned spiritually, mentally, physically. And uh, you know, th this is the art for me, man. This is, you know, this is, this is what I want to do. I want to go out there and paint a, a perfect picture. How much do you think that has to do with being in Bellator now? Like, do you feel whether it's, you know, financially or how you're being promoted, all these different things, like, is there something that's elevating that side of the game to maybe, you know, make you have that love for it? That was maybe something missing when you're in the UFC or is that uh, a stretch, that statement? Would you say? No, you know what, honestly, I think uh, just having these the low times, you know, having the dark times where I was able to realize, you know, life was still good either, you know, even when I was losing, I had to make a, adjustments to you know being happy at low times and being grateful for good times and low times and just remaining neutral through it all and still trying to be the better me you know this is what i, I think this sport really has changed me man i don't know who i'd be without this sport you know i i was a young and secure kid five foot six had had acne all over my face and and i was really down on myself and the sport was able for me you know this was like the sport kind of gave me the ability to like break out of that break out of my old habits break out of you know just just the way I was living, I understand uh, how important reps are, you know, not just physically, but mentally. And I feel like um, I think that's why I improved my life, you know, you know, like I, I'm able to just really be happy through it all. That's great, man. I'm so happy to hear that. And um, to, to shift back to this fight a little bit, I mean, this is more of a, I guess, a fan media type of narrative that we're looking at going to this fight. But obviously, Horiguchi had that belt. He never lost it in the ring. He had to vacate it, uh, that kind of thing. So it kind of, you know, when that happens with the champion, whether they retire or whatever gets stripped, kind of just leaves like a, a little bit of a cloud over the division for a little bit. Is okay. any of that a driving force for you going into this fight? Being like, hey, anyone who you know may say he's like the quote unquote real champion something like that, I can shut all that down with the win here. For sure, yeah. In my head, that's how I view it too, man. I'm, I, I view it as, uh, you know, that he was the champion and he hurt his knee, unfortunately, and had to vacate the belt and Juan won it by a beating patchy mix. And I beat Juan, but at the end of the day, you know, that's Horiguchi's belt. Right now, I'm just kind of babysitting it. And uh, I think this fight will really signify who the real champion is of this division. That's great. And um, yeah, man. So like, what do you kind of hope the the next year looks like? This is the final main event for Bellator this year. Um, there's a lot of talk about them doing a Grand Prix at 135. Like, does this appeal to you? Because as the champion, I know that would be the trickiest. You know, you're putting your title on the line through every round of that tournament. I don't know if they would do it eight or 16 people, but like, does that something like that excite you? Or would you rather, you know, be doing some title defenses on the side? They could do a Grand Prix to come up with like a top contender or something like that. Yeah, man, I'm not a, I'm not afraid of losing this belt. Honestly, that's that's the thing. Like, I, I'm, I'm I'm willing to put it all on the line. Like, even though I was in the UFC, I, I took fights that people didn't want to take because I was willing to challenge myself and really trying to see what my skill set is against some of the best in the the division. Um, I moved up a weight class, you know, at at 125 and fought Rob Font, who was number 10 at the time, but dude was way bigger than me, and uh, you know, he was a little bit more polished than me at the time. But I I was really uh, you know willing to come up and take that fight. I wasn't gonna say no, so. You know, I won't say no to any fight. I'm willing to put it on the line every time. And, um, you know, this is a, a, I think that'd be awesome to have a Grand Prix. I've never experienced something that in my career or in my life. So 
Uh, yeah, I see, uh, you know, I'm getting older, man. I get some gray hairs, my hair lines receding. So uh, I just, you know, I'm, I'm really uh, just enjoying the sport and enjoying the opportunities. If that's an opportunity that could happen, um, I would love that. Yeah, and especially if they're putting that $1 million check on the line for the winner, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. That that would be a, a great uh, incentive, too, man. That'd be awesome. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, yeah, I appreciate the time, man. I actually need to ask you, I think you won Halloween, right, with the Prince costume this year? That was absolutely <laughs> killer. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. I'm a big Dave Chappelle fan. I watched him growing up, and I've been wanting to do that costume for years, and thought I had the facial hair uh, good, you know, a little mustache, so I just drew some stuff on. It was a good, good, good time, man. Yeah, it was perfect. Do you kind of take pride in like the yearly Halloween costume? Like, do you have some good ones even from previous years before this? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have some decent ones. I, not all the time. There's like one, once, like once every three years that I feel like, all right, I should dress up and try to do something. Uh, I did a good Wiz Khalifa one when I was younger. And yeah, this, I think this one was my best one so far. <laughs> That's solid. That's great. And uh, obviously, I'm guessing you don't get to do much celebrating for Thanksgiving. Or are you able to eat a little bit and spend some family time? Or how does that work for you? Um, yeah, you know, this, this Thanksgiving is just all business. Um, I've, I've missed a lot of Thanksgivings throughout my career anyways. You know, I've usually fight around December, November time. So nothing new to me. Um, my family's actually out in Vegas celebrating with my brother, Anthony. So I'm just glad they're all together and get to enjoy themselves and, you know, get some good food. They're going to send me some pictures. So yeah, I'll get to see what they're eating at least. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Well, hopefully it'll uh, make your, your way kind of a little bit easier, at least being able to pretend you're there mentally, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Awesome, man. Well, uh, yeah, I appreciate the time. It's always great to catch up. And uh, I know this is a really anticipated fight for a lot of people. So I'm excited to see you guys go in there and just mix it up. It should be a really entertaining one. Thank you, brother. I appreciate the time, too. I can't can't wait till next Friday. See you soon.